Qué amor de Dios. Oh, we need light. I was up really late last night. I did a workshop for the San Francisco Psychedelic Society. And then I stayed up working on smoke balloons and stuff. And I woke up this morning thinking about probably the worst thing that plagued me the most before I found Amanita. It just got so overwhelming and exhausting. So, last night, I spoke. Y'all can see the recording. They've got it over. I'll find a link. I'll put a link somewhere in here to it. But I spoke, whatever. And then we opened up for questions. And someone asked, the very first question was really personal and I answered it because y'all know me I'm an open book I don't really I don't have anything to hide but it seemed stacked and loaded it was full of manipulation and innuendo I mean it was just really it wasn't an honest question but I was in a really open place and I answered it but it just felt icky. I mean, I don't regret anything that I said, but, but, I woke up this morning, and I mean the very first thought as soon as I opened my eyes was, ew. Not because I said anything I regret. Everything I said was true and honest. But I just had this gross feeling and like, why didn't I say that's just really too personal? Why didn't I set a boundary? That wasn't the right atmosphere, time, place. It was just a horrible feeling. And I felt ashamed, like I should have known better. And why would she have even asked something like that? You know, she was reading, a, one of the viewers had written it and she was just reading it. And I'm sure she just thought, hey, it's a long question. It seems thorough, whatever. Things were moving quickly in my head. And what I had to remind myself of is, number one, you can't always be perfect and answer things or do things perfectly in the moment. And I mean, I'm sitting there on the spot with over a hundred people. My mind's going, I'm processing the energy of the people and I was in an open place. But then I realized, you know, it's not, it wasn't about last night. There's nothing wrong with last night. Nothing wrong with the question, nothing wrong with the answer. It was that, that manipulative sense in it, that loaded question in it, that stacked feeling in it, that sense that this is not what it seems, it's not honest, is so much like our childhoods and the way we've been treated and it will make you question yourself. It's called crazy making behavior. It's verbally and emotionally manipulative and abusive. And stacked loaded questions are manipulative and abusive. And they're designed for you to fall into a trap. And no matter how hard you sit and think about it, you're not gonna know what the trap is. And it's a perfect trap because when you're in a volley situation with a conversation, you know, I speak, you speak, I speak, you speak, there's a flow to it. And it's a perfect chance to trap someone because we're conditioned as humans to not let there be silence and to not think before we speak, to, to keep the flow going. And then when you're trying to answer a question that's manipulative and loaded and you get this feeling like, hey, something's not right here, this doesn't seem like a fair question. It's just indicative that you're not the problem, but it's designed to make you think you are. Because you can't win, no matter how you answer a question that's loaded and manipulative, you're gonna lose. And what's worse is it was recorded, and now it's gonna live forever for everybody to see. But again, like I'm not ashamed of anything I said or how I answered it, but 
it could be used to trap me later when anybody wants to talk about me or criticize me because it's the way the question was worded, it was a trap and there's no right or good answer. So the only answer I could give was my honest answer and then live with that and know that I'm, I'm okay. But it got me thinking this morning, hold on, I need more coffee. So good. It got me thinking about how a lot of us spend most of our time going over past events, wondering where we fucked up, feeling like we're the problem knowing we're the problem, trying to figure out how we're the problem. Because if we weren't the problem, then people would, situations would, things would stop being. And see, that's, that's the issue right there is when you make that assumption that if you were a better person, then you would get the things you want and the things that you don't like would stop happening and shitty situations would stop happening. And I'm telling you now, after two years of Amanita and feeling pretty good about my choices, I'm bringing better things into my life, but I'm not, I've brought more shitty people around. I've brought more hate, more criticism, more manipulation, more abuse. think when you, the better that you become, that you feel, the better that you feel like you behave, the better decisions that you make, you're going to attract more sick people. Because all it's doing is shining a light on their sickness. When you lose weight, get a better job, smile more, feel more fit, um, feel happier and, and less depressed, less anxious. When you start going after goals and managing to do it, then all of the people around you that have settled into liking you the way that you are, they've worked out their hierarchy of where they fit. They think they've figured you out and they either use you as the token person in their life they can dump on or they like to feel like they're superior to you so they can always just call you up when they don't feel so good so they can feel better about themselves so that they can judge you or they need to use you or they need to feel like, you know, misery loves company. Like everybody's got you pegged in whatever way they need you to be. And that's not necessarily who you are or how you feel about yourself. This is where they've put you. So when you get out of that, you make everybody around you uncomfortable and what you do is you unearth their sickness. This is the beginning of shadow work. This is the beginning of the darkness and it gets dark. Now, shadow work, you go more into your own darkness and into your own issues, but this is how it starts, is you start to feel better about yourself or you start to make different decisions and immediately everyone around you tries to put you back. And the more you stand up for yourself and the more you say no or set boundaries and get people out of your life, the more lonely you're gonna be, the more confused you're gonna be, the more unsure you're gonna be that you're doing the right thing and it will shake your foundation of what you're doing but you're not the problem. But they'll try to make you think you are. People don't like to take responsibility. So the best thing you could do is set a boundary. That's how you find out who really respects you and who doesn't. It's really amazing. But I'm telling you, if you feel like you're the problem, like you broke something, like you fucked up. Like the reason this bad thing happened is because you fill in the blank. First of all, you're not that powerful. Second of all, you're not that important. 
And third of all, probably wouldn't you. That doesn't mean you don't fuck up. Doesn't mean we don't all make mistakes. But I can promise you, most of the mistakes you've made you don't even know about because they weren't important enough. They didn't blip on the radar enough for you to hear about it. And most people probably just sort of didn't notice or blew it off or ignored it or it wasn't that big a deal. When you've made a big mistake, you know. You know about it. You feel the regret almost immediately. Or nothing has to change. You just watch other people's lives because of something you said or did. And you are usually the first one to bring it up. And most of the time they'll be like, yeah, but you know, it's okay. And then we're understanding. This is the hard part to really pay attention to. When you honestly make a real mistake, that's what it's gonna look like. So when people are coming at you, there's a good chance it's not you. If you're ruminating and stressing out and panicking over something that how you did it or said it, I can promise you, you're fine. And nobody else thinks anything of it. That's not to say there aren't people out there that are just doing nothing but causing damage. Like that's all they do is damage, damage people, damage everything they touch. Those people exist, but they know it. They know it. No, they look like they don't know it. No, no. Especially narcissists. They know it on the inside. They're permanently, deeply broken. Well, I don't know. Maybe some of them can heal. But short of being a narcissist, they are probably just seriously hurting even narcissists are just seriously hurting. But most people that cause that kind of destruction are addicted to something, and it's the addiction. It's the drug in them that's making those choices and hurting people. And they're well aware. They feel like one big ball of fuck up. They hate their existence. I can tell you the fact that you're listening to this <laughs> means you're probably not one great big ball of fuck up. You're probably not that person. And that means you're doing your best all the time. That means there's probably very little for you to be ruminating about or going over. And you're probably not the problem. You probably make mistakes like everybody. And it's probably not noticed most of the time. You're probably the only one that noticed. Every time you want to stress out about a conversation or something you did or a choice you made or something you said or the way that you handled something, ask yourself, is this how I've been treated when I was a child? Was I constantly shamed? Because this is shame. Shame is so hard to pick out. Shame is one of the hardest feelings to find, to name, to be aware of so slippery, it's so insidious, it's so destructive. But going back over innocent things that in the moment you did with no normalcy, kindness, love in your heart, joy, good intentions, and then you're second guessing it, that's shame. It's not reality. And you're not the problem. What if you were the problem? Are you not the kind of person that would fix it the minute you found out? Look at all of the things around you that you worry about. Do you think if you were really the problem, that if you could magically fix it, that all of this stuff would just magically stop happening? That's what I mean when I say you're not that powerful. Because you're not the problem. 
some people are that powerful. Some people really are the problem and they just, they cause destruction. And when they stop drinking or stop doing that drug or whatever, suddenly everything's better. Like they really were that powerful. But short of that, you're just not that powerful because you're just not that big of a problem. You're not the problem. And if you have people in your life trying to tell you that you are, and you have looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, and you can't see it, then you're probably not the problem. If you're constantly working on it and constantly trying to fix it, then you're not the problem. You need to start giving yourself permission to be okay. That's how it starts. That's the beginning of being okay. I would know. I lived my entire life in panic and anxiety. I lived my entire life being gaslighted and abused and being told how fucked up I am. And I can tell you now, after Amanita and getting rid of panic and anxiety, I feel good. But now, I easily have 10 times as many people abusing me, gaslighting me, and telling me how fucked up I am because I'm Amanita Dreamer. And I've never felt more unbroken. I know I'm not the problem. I might fuck up, but my fuck ups aren't, they're just not gonna be earth shattering or that big of a deal. They're just not that important because I'm not that important. What's important is the good work I'm doing. My heart that's in it, the intentions that I want to do good. The people that know that are going to see that. They're going to love me and they're going to care and they're going to reciprocate that. Some people have a hard time with vulnerable people, with honesty, with realness, with love, kindness. I feel sad for them, but I'm not going to give them that much power. Especially when they want to make me the problem. And no, nobody said anything about last night's workshop other than just good things. But of course, I take all the silence, the people who didn't show up, the people who don't comment on videos, the people that buy my smoke blends and never leave a review. I assume all that silence is bad and negative and I'm failing tremendously. I'm not the problem. I'm not the answer, but I'm not the problem. I'm just me, and you're just you, and you're beautiful. I love you, beautiful people. Thanks for having coffee with me. Have a good day. You deserve it. Be good to yourself.